Hi, my name's Phil. I like talking about politics. And in this video, I'm going to discuss um, a couple of acts of extra special desperation. One by the Brexit supporting community who, I, I'm, I'm afraid to say, made a bit of a fool of themselves yesterday. And the other by the government who's panicked to deal with the delivery driver crisis without actually doing anything to deal with the crisis has reached a new low as they are seeking to reduce the already limited numbers of paramedics and firefighters that we have. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So it's it sort of gone like this with, with Brexit shortages. As a result of, of many thousands of EU HGV drivers leaving Britain and not coming back, we now have a critical shortage. Ah yes, say the Brexiteers, but we had a shortage beforehand. In fact, you'll find that the EU also have a shortage of lorry drivers. True enough. Lorry driving is its a crap job with crap wages by and large. It is not an appealing prospect for many potential young entrants into the profession at all. It really doesn't suit what the millennials want of a work-life balance. But, and, and here is the difference between a shortage and a critical shortage. The EU countries were not experiencing a shortage of deliveries of food, medical supplies, petrol. Also, their shortage just got a bit smaller because you'll never guess what. Some idiot island told a load of lorry drivers to bugger off when they already didn't have enough. So now the remaining EU countries have more. But it's not just about the numbers of lorry drivers. Brexit rules means that British lorry drivers can't operate as efficiently in the EU and EU lorry drivers can't operate as efficiently in Britain. Cabotage. The idea of running a route whereby you have a load, you're carrying your load, for which you're getting paid, you drop it off and then you pick up another one there. So not necessarily at the same shop, but in that same town. And then you drive that somewhere else, you drop that off and pick another one up. And you do this whole route, which means, remember, you're only getting paid while you're moving with a load in the back of your, your lorry. If it's empty, you're getting nothing. You can't do that now. It's gone. The whole thing is just non-existent between Britain and the single market now. That means that fewer, the fewer drivers that we have can't actually deliver as much. But the bottom line is that the tangible effect of this is a shortage of food, of medical supplies and petrol in Britain. These shortages have been going on for months now and are going to get worse. These shortages are also not replicated outside Britain. Now, some Brexiteers have tried to pull the odd trick, you know, trying to show photos of empty shells. Um, and there was <laughs> one in particular, tried to show, oh look, empty shells there in Spain. And it's like, mate, that's Tesco. And unfortunately, and yeah, you know, this is just unfortunate. The game was somewhat given away with its Tesco and the price was in pounds, not euros. Bless. Still, they tried, they tried. So imagine their joy when someone got a photo of an actual empty shelf in a shop in Belgium. OMG, that's in the EU. We've got them. We've got them, they cried. Oh, it's all happening in the EU as well. We've got them this time, unfortunately. They failed to translate the sign that was explaining the shortages on the shelf in this Belgian shop. It was a bit of a shame because it may have saved them some embarrassment. See, although it's an actual genuine shortage of a few products in an actual shelf in the EU, this is absolutely a shelf with some missing products, the cause wasn't down to a lack of lorry drivers or retail workers or the ping down. It was nothing at all to do with any of these things it was down to strike action at a distribution centre. The workers are there. They were just having an industrial dispute. The dispute is now over. Work has resumed and the shelves in that and nearby shops are back to being full again. It was a shortage that lasted a matter of hours. And I'm also afraid to say that's not the extent to which they embarrass themselves. See, when this point, this post went up on the Euro Guido, you know, of Guido folks, Twitter feed, the dispute was already over. <laughs> it's already been finished with. So not only did they get their facts wrong, they were trying to report on it after it had already been done and dusted. You know, in other words, it's basically like someone trying to write a report on the first half of the 1972 World Cup and then say, oh, I wonder what's going to happen next. Dear. <laughs> You know, so let's say they'd have gone there to that shop to do some live streams or something like that. 
they, they'd have found that the shelves were already full at that point. And, and, and at this point, I feel I have to do, I have to say something so that people don't misunderstand me. See, Brexit is extremely divisive. It's unfortunate. I don't like the idea of Brexit creating opposing tribes in my country. That seems to be what it's done, but it is petty and destructive. Now, I could be discussing this. I could just engage in it. I could discuss this um, embarrassing episode on the part of some Brexiteers eager to try and prove that they aren't continuing to be extremely dumb in supporting Brexit. I'm not going to do it. I'm not discussing this because I want to embarrass Brexit supporters. I certainly don't want to embarrass Brexit voters because many have already realised their error and I hope many more do. I'd much rather calmly explain how things are working out, how the government have no plan to cope with Brexit because there is no plan for blowing your own kneecaps off, but how there is a plan for reversing the damage. And in order to start reversing this damage, we need to work together with those who unwittingly brought it about. We need to work in the spirit of reconciliation and common cause. So I'm not talking about this in some triumphalist manner designed to cause maximum humiliation to the nutters like Guido Fawkes. I'm talking about this because it is extremely funny. But that's the desperation of some still trying to claim that Brexit has not actually caused any problems, despite it being obvious that it has many. These guys are a long way behind the curve. We then have, however, the desperation of the government trying to deal with the mess that Brexit is causing, because they're having to face up to it now. And I've already talked yesterday, I think it was, about how the government were writing to all and sundry to persuade them to either come back to driving lorries or driving delivery trucks, even if you've never driven one before. I also mentioned how a paramedic had received such a letter. Well, it turns out this was not an isolated example. The Mirror ran a report that thousands of paramedics and firefighters have been written to by the Department for Transport to give up their life-saving jobs and deliver bread and milk. So it wasn't an oversight as I thought. You know, the government are actively trying to persuade those who drive ambulances and fire trucks to quit their jobs. Now, you may not be surprised to learn that we also have a shortage of paramedics in the UK, not helped by the severe pressure they've been put on and the risk of burnout because of the pandemic. And we've also short of thousands of firefighters in the UK as well. But do you know what? Boris Johnson isn't getting grief in the press over shortages of emergency workers, only HGV drivers. So with his famous short-term thinking, oh, oh, what do I need to do to survive this week? Oh, what do the headlines say I should do? Oh, I should sort out lorry driver crisis. Right, let's just get a load of people to drive lorries. Yeah, but we need them We need them to, to ferry the sick around. Oh, I'm not getting into trouble for people dying. Oh, but we need them to put fires out. I'm not getting into trouble for fires. I'm getting into trouble for lorries. And he'll worry about the fallout from that later. Not that we need worry too much about it, I don't think. I can't see either paramedics or firefighters making this career change in significant numbers, or even, frankly, above zero numbers. But the message that this sends from the government is twofold. One, they care only about dealing with whatever the newspaper front pages seem to care about at the moment even if it means making an even worse crisis later on, that inevitably then the newspapers would bang on about then, but they'll worry about that later. And secondly, that the government has no actual plan to deal with the crisis. Like I'd already made this point in the other video, but I think I may have to keep making it. See, when you have a problem, obviously what you do is you work out a range of potential solutions. You prioritise, of course. The easiest solutions with the best chance of success are what you go for first, and then you work your way down the list. By the time you're trying to tempt, say, successful business owners to close their business and drive a delivery truck for Warburton's, or you're trying to persuade an already limited number of emergency services workers to haul baked beans around the country, I think at that point, there aren't really any other solutions to try, are there? You know, the only other go ongoing plan that they had, apart from making tests easier, uh, was for the lorry driver visas. They've now quietly changed the conditions of that. So instead of the scheme only working for three months, the visa will now last for three months from when the work begins. I was making the point that, look, you're not going to attempt EU lorry drivers over with that. So it's once from further afield. Once from further afield, you're going to need to do tests. So that'll probably last a few months, by which time the visas run out. So they're saying, all right, it can last from three months from when the work starts. Which is still not going to do the job, you know, 
But it, what it does do is it shows that they are quietly watering down their Brexit immigration policy in the face of the grim realities of that policy. Now, they'll obviously have to quietly water it down a lot more before it actually starts to do anything, but that may yet happen. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. And if you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.